Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2021 BMW X1, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Kurt trailer wiring harness with a four-way flat connector. But before we do that, let's check it out and make sure this is something that you're gonna need. So we get a lot of people using these beamers to do uh, a little bit of everything, you know, and that does include pulling some trailers around. Well, whenever you are pulling a trailer, you're gonna want the lights to work. That way people around you know what's going on. It'll just keep you a little more safe and not to mention legal as well. And that's exactly where this wiring kit is going to come into play. It's gonna provide us with the connector that we need. That way we can hook up our trailer and have all the lights work. With the wiring kit being a four-way flat type connector, that's a really common type. It's gonna work with a lot of your smaller type trailers like utility trailers and things of that nature. Um, what's pretty popular nowadays too is, is uh, lights on accessories like a lot of cargo carriers for example have some lights on it. Chances are pretty good. Uh, those will use this type of connector so you'll be able to power those up as well. Has a dust cover that's included to help keep it protected. And one thing about this setup it uses what's called the converter box and it uses its own individual power wire too so it gets power from the, your vehicle's battery and so what that's going to do is help keep your vehicle protected if there's an issue or anything like that you're not going to have to worry about it frying your bmw's uh, electrical system but other than that at the end of the day a wiring kit that's going to get the job done now i will say with this being more or less kind of a universal type wiring kit you are going to have to splice into your wires but believe it or not that's the easy part. There's really no you know, challenge there uh, associated with it. The hardest part about the installation is actually running the power wire from the back to the front. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time, so definitely you know, set aside the better part of an afternoon to get this done. Uh, I do wanna mention something as well. With these, uh, with these imported cars, be real careful if there's a custom fit kit available, uh, make sure to compare the type of connectors. So a lot of those custom kits will plug into the back of your taillights. Just take a quick peek at them and make sure those connectors match up because sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And so this is where a kit like this comes into play. Uh, it allows you to hook up to any vehicle more or less. But uh, with all that said, why don't we go ahead and start getting this installed now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here at the back of our BMW. What we need to do is remove our taillights. So, We'll start by opening up our rear hatch. And then if you come here to this area, we're gonna have this uh, plastic cover deal. And right there, there's gonna be a fastener. You can just very lightly unscrew this. It'll probably wanna stop. And if it does, you can just grab it and kind of pry it out. It's almost like a hybrid screw-in, press-in type fastener, so that out of the way you pull out on this and then lift up then to get the light out we're gonna have two 10 millimeter nuts and pull those out and we'll grab our tail light pull straight back and we'll disconnect them for now so pull up on that red tab push down on the connector and that'll separate it so repeat the same process to get the other one removed at this point i went ahead and tested our wiring so connector here is some electrical tape you can just peel that back and we're going to have three wires a brown one a black and yellow one and a uh, gray and purple one and so what i did i just very carefully peeled a little back a little bit of the insulation back and what we're looking for is our uh, tail light signal, our stop light signal, and our turn signal. And so what I did is I just used a test light and you ground it out and you put it on each one of the wires. So now I have my tail light signal on. So you can see when I touch that this bare metal here, you can see my lights going on. So I'll go ahead and turn my lights off. And now I shouldn't have a signal there anymore. So I turn them off. And don't have any signal. So we know that's a taillight circuit. Um, if you need a test light, you can grab one here at E-Trailer. 
and I did that for everything. So and what I came up with is this gray wire with the purple stripe. That's our taillight signal. And it turns out that we have a two wire system. So this black wire with the yellow stripe, that's gonna control our turn as well as our brake signal. And it's set up the same way on the other side as well. So now that we verified this is a two wire system, we can move forward with hooking it up and know which way we can hook it up. So one thing we'll do right away is uh, our white wire is gonna be ground wire. And with this being a two wire system, we also need to make the red wire ground. And so what I'm gonna do, this is cut it maybe about to here. Let's snip that wire off. And then we're gonna take one of these included um, quick connect uh, deals here. And you can see the, the one side is closed off. So you're gonna take your red wire and put it into that side, all right? And you don't even have to keep it in there for now. Sometimes it's easier to put it in last, but whatever happens to be the easiest for you. But you're gonna take this white wire and sneak that one into the first opening there. Make sure the red one's in. You wanna make sure it's all the way through. So once you have them both in there and they're lined up, this metal portion here, you're gonna take a pair of pliers and squeeze down on it. And that's actually going to connect those two wires together. So it's nice and tight, nothing's coming out. Once you have it like that, you can close up this cap. Now what we need to do is, uh, I'm going to take a fish wire here. This is a piece of tubing, but you can use a coat hanger or a string with a bolt tied to it or another piece of wire. But what we're trying to do is just drop this through here. I'm gonna do this to each side of our vehicle too, that way we have them both ready. But this is gonna come out down through here. And once we have this down here, you're gonna take the yellow and brown wire and you can tape it to your wire or whatever the case may be for you. I think I might just be able to kind of jam them in And this is gonna make it a lot easier to, uh, to get our wiring up where it needs to go. We'll just put a piece of tape on it for good measure. And we're just gonna pull this back up. Gonna start to feed it up into position. Getting hung up on something down here. But, we're able to remove our tape and then we can go ahead and start to get these connected to the corresponding wires. So I'll go ahead and do that now uh, and show you what it looks like. So I went ahead and got this hooked up. So the factory black wire with the yellow stripe since that's our stop and turn. The new yellow wire will go to it. And since the factory gray wire with the purple stripe is our taillight signal, the new brown wire will go to that one. And I just use those quick splices using that same technique that, uh, that I showed you a few minutes ago. And just to be on the safe side now, I'm just gonna wrap some tape around everything. And then what we're able to do is uh, grab our tail light and get that reinstalled the opposite way that we removed it. So we'll plug directly back in and we'll push it back into place. Now underneath our vehicle, we can mount up our box and I'm gonna use a combination of the sticky tape and a screw. So I'll take your sticky tape, clean off the surfaces. This probably won't do a whole lot, but you know, might as well use it and kind of I have two for one. And then I'm just gonna go underneath this wire too. I actually feel like that'll help hold it up a little bit. So we'll stick that in place. And then I'm also going to use a self-tapping screw to run up through there. 
and help hold it as well. So that's not going anywhere. And while we're right here, we might as well ground out our ground wire too. So any clean metal will work. Uh, we'll just go right here. Actually, I might, since this kind of has some rubber coating on it, I might come back with a razor and kind of scrape that clean. That way we get a, a really good ground. I cleaned off a small area here. I just used a, a razor edge and flat edge screwdriver and just kind of scraped everything clean to expose the bare metal. You're gonna take the self tapper, put it through the ring terminal, and tighten it on down. So I went ahead and just kind of taped all of our wires up here to make them uh, organized and secure. Use some zip ties as well. And I started to route some of our wiring, so our four-way flat wiring and our single green wire. I just ran that along through here using some zip ties along the way. Our four-way flat, I dropped down here to the mounting bracket on our hitch, zip tied that up. The green wire continues along the top of our trailer hitch, comes out right here, and I connected it to our pull wire that we put in earlier. That way we can pull it up into the tail light pocket. With that said, our wire does fall short by a few feet actually, and so I had to extend it. So I grabbed maybe four foot of green wire, um, uh, and you can pick this up here at e-trailer if you don't have any at home. And then I just used a heat shrink buck connector. So you strip back the ends of the insulation, plug the two ends of the wire in, and crimp it down. Use the heat source to seal up the ends there. Um, a regular buck connector will work just fine too. But um, now that we have it like this, I'll go up top, pull on our pull wire to bring everything up into the tail light pocket. So I pulled our wire on up, and here's what it looks like. We only have to hook up one wire over here for our stop and turn signal, which is the factory black wire with the yellow stripe. So our green wire got connected to that using the quick splice. But with that done, just like the other side, I'll tape this up and uh, reinstall the tail light. Moving back to our converter box, we're gonna have one more wire we need to hook up. So this black one, this is gonna be a power wire. What I've done is took the big bundle of power wire that comes with our kit and crimped on a buck connector to one side. We wanna strip back the insulation similar to this. Uh, I'm using a heat shrink buck connector. They just offer a little more protection, but the one that does come included will work just fine. Um, you know, just be sure to tape that one up real good when you're done uh, making your connections. But that said, we'll slide that in, crimp it down. And with this being the heat shrink, we'll come back with our heat source and seal up the ends. I started to route our wiring. So our black wire comes up through here. That's where our buck connector was. I just put tape on it too, just to give it an extra layer of protection there. And shot it up along through here. Along the way, you want to use zip ties to keep it secure and do your best to avoid hot and moving parts. But I ran it up through there, above our subframe and our upper control arms. And it's gonna be a little tricky to see here, but it kind of comes up through there and if i peel this panel down you can see the wire there and all these panels are held in place with eight millimeter head bolts and there's a couple 10 millimeter plastic nuts as well so i just kind of undid them and give us that space that we need but here's our wire it simply follows our brake line <clears throat> all the way up to the front here and then once we get to this point, what I'm going to do is go up top and get a pull wire, just like the one that we used in our taillights, drop that pull wire down into this area. I'll tape our wire to it, and then we're going to be able to go back up top, pull on our wire, and bring the end of this power wire where we need it.
So I tried several times to feed our fish wire down through the engine compartment and it's just so tight in there. There's really not a good way around it. So the way I got the wire into the engine compartment was I actually utilized our wheel well opening. So it's gonna be really tricky to see just because it's buried in there. But our wheel well liner, I kind of peeled it back and ran our wire up through there. And then once I got about halfway, I started to reach in the engine compartment where I was able to kind of reach down, grab the wire and pull it up. So here in the engine compartment, our wire comes up through here and I took apart this. This was originally here. There's two eight millimeter screws and you pull up this weather strip, it pops up. And at this point, we can connect our power wire to the included fuse holder. So I just used a buck connector and a ring terminal. And I removed this nut here on the positive battery. I used a 13 millimeter socket, slid the ring terminal over it, tightened it down. Then I was able to put our fuse back in. So with this buttoned up, I'll go ahead and tuck our wiring in kind of put some of our panels back and then it's a good idea to test everything to make sure it's working properly. To test our wiring, I'm using this small tester which I recommend over just plugging into your trailer. Um, that way if your trailer has an issue, you know, the small tester will bypass it and you can grab it here at each trailer. But with that said, we'll turn on our left turn signal, our right turn signal, our brakes, and our running lights. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Kurt trailer wiring harness with a four-way flat connector on our 2021 BMW X1.